Hello and welcome back to the second part of my porting series. In this episode we will take a look on the progress and the porting process to Gudo 4 for the first area in my game, the desert. As you can already see in the gameplay footage in the background, the main goal for this level was to create a windy and bleak atmosphere. The desert level is split into four smaller scenes containing the bridge, a smaller tower, the desert itself and the outside of the sunken tower. The inside area of the sunken tower will be covered in the next and last video of the series. So I started working on this level back in October of 2021 using the pre-alva version of Godot. I was so happy with how the scene turned out that I decided to keep it and backport it to the current version of Godot. However, due to some breaking changes between the Godot 4 nightly build and the current version, I decided to hold off on further development until the new version was more stable. To make the building process easier, I exported the level as a GLTF file from Godot to Blender, where I did some cleanup and editing. And then I re-exported to the current version of Godot. And this scene acts as a placeholder for the entire level, which I can build upon in Godot. Moreover, I also exported each object separately and created individual scenes for each one. This helps me a lot to keep everything organized and also allows me for quick changes or editing in the scene later on. What you can see here is the beginning of creating an environment. On this environment I will start to replace each mesh with its corresponding Godot scene. And once that is done, I will continue to build upon the level and improve on the level. One of the new improvements I am making use of is the Godot 4 particle system. It has increased performance and allows for instance the use of sub emitters or particle collisions. The increased performance is especially helpful for me as my grass particle shaders called upon thousands of grass objects which are scattered on the ground based on the noise value. So with this I can create more dense flocks of grass. In addition to the particle improvements, Godot 4 also has new shader features such as global shader uniforms or the new shader creation dialog. I am using the shader uniforms to create a global ambient wind effect which you can see here. Moreover, I also use the new sky and walk volume shaders. I for instance use a simple scrolling noise displacement in a shader to create a fake movement on a HDR panorama texture. Fork volume shaders are very powerful too and are super helpful to produce a strong atmosphere. In this video for instance I already showed how you can recreate this sandstorm effect step by step if you are interested in seeing this. I also started to use more omni light sources in Godot 4 thanks to the switch to a Vulkan renderer which uses a more performant default rendering system for lightning if I'm correct. Nevertheless, this is a significant improvement over Godot 3's unfortunate poor lightning performance and also limited number of lights per object. I for example now can use for every fire source an additional omni light to create an even more convincing effect. The new physics system in Godot 4 is also very powerful, allowing for instance the use of very complex collision shapes with still good performance in game. This for instance allows me to skip um, the creation of custom collision shapes in some cases. Another feature is the level of detail and visibility range which has been added to every geometry. It's very helpful to optimize the environmental objects like rocks or in some cases also plants. However, some very complex objects like trees still require custom LODs due to the incorrect decimation. But overall, the switch from Godot 3 to the current Godot 4 beta 
has been a real game changer and all of the new and improved features have been very powerful. This desert level is just one example of how you can utilize those features to create your own worlds. In my world for instance I use for a fire a very simple particle system with a texture. The new turbulence functionality makes the flame look less static and fakes the swaying in the wind. I also created a new prompt system which turned out very nice. When a prompt should appear you can easily add the text and the according button texture to it to be shown on screen. I also added a bunch of new weapons in the game. They have been all inspired by the Sortemba artworks from different artists. So I'm not entirely sure if I keep them in the game due to the copyright. A few examples I still want to show you are the anchor, the gravestone, the double bladed weapon and a cleaver. Another example I want to show you is that you can create cool looking fog walls using shaders and particles together. Or you can create waving fabric or flags by using vertex shaders. I also made some improvements in the inventory to allow the player to access and switch between different weapons more easily. The enemy behavior also gets better and better and I also plan to add pairing to the game eventually. As you can probably see the game takes on more and more shape and it's getting closer to a new open testing phase which will happen hopefully this year. So this was everything for this video. The next and last video of the series will be about the sunken tower. Due to personal duties I expect for the next videos to release in about 4 months. So I'm very sorry for the delay but since I have less and less time for development the speed also decreases. So thank you for watching. See you then. Goodbye.